This is a first edition, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Oh, beautiful book. I love this book. Except that. Uh, there's some issues with this copy. Uh <laughs> Here we are at Alex's new location, uh, 127th Street and about 109 Avenue. Not quite open yet, but uh, we came to look at the books he uh, was telling me about. And you can see this shelf. I've already taken out three boxes of books. We've got a few more there. Uh, it's almost all Canadiana stuff, some other few things, but they're all signed. And they all fit very well with uh, Bailey Books. So uh, we came down and uh, made a deal with Alex. We're going to take all these back to the shop and see what we have. Oh, goodness, it's a chilly day out here. Well, we're back at the shop with our find from Alex's place, Curiosity Inc. Uh, we'll get him into the shop and we're going to have a look and see what we have. I'm just wondering if we can... Uh... Here, let me get the door. Let's see you. We can uh, sneak up on the head of security here at Bailey Books. It's a, it's a high-tech system. It's only been beaten once. Um, I'll leave the books there. Let's just see. Oh, hi, here is the head of security at Bailey Books. Well, the, yeah, almost impossible to break into this place. One of the things that adds to the value of a book almost more than anything uh, is the scarcity of that book. If it's the only one, it's pretty darn valuable. Uh, you know, if there's only a handful, pretty darn valuable. Um, the other thing is condition of the book. Uh, is it in... Good condition, very good condition, uh, near fine condition, poor. Uh, there's various ways of determining that. Uh, and that will tell you how to price that book uh, in relation to the scarcity of the book, the condition of the book, uh, how many are out there, where are they located. If they're only in Australia, somebody here in Western Canada may not want to buy that book from Australia. They may come and look for a North American bookseller. Um I found this book, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. It is the first British edition. And um, I'm going to show you something really cool about this book that makes it kind of scarce. Pretty excited. Some, uh, some new merch arrived. Look at this. I have... The best folks on my side, because uh, this just showed up in the mail as a surprise, and I was surprised and thrilled. Uh, can't wait till we get our full line of merchandise in, and then we'll go crazy. Ah. I want to back up a little bit about uh, the books we got or acquired from Alex uh, the other day. Uh, I specialize in um, signed books, uh, out of print collectible, Western Canadian history, Canadian history, fiction, all sorts of different things. But I've always primarily focused on signed books. It was my niche when I started selling on the internet about 17, 15 years ago, whatever it was, uh, that would allow me to be competitive as just this tiny little bookseller out here in the, the wilds of Western Canada. So having a signed book was a way that I could stand out amongst all of the uh, then um, thousands of booksellers that were online. So when Alex phones and said, I have a whole you know shelf full of signed books, well, my ears always perk up and uh, I'm always interested. And I'll, I'll show you the, the ones that we, uh, we picked up yesterday. I have to confess that uh, holding a signed book in my hand is it's kind of a personal thrill too. I know it, it, it helps to, uh, to sell the book and it makes them more desirable to uh, a lot of people and, and some collectors, but uh, yeah, I kind of like it myself a lot. <laughs> um, 
Now, in in the books that we were looking at, uh, in those boxes, there's always you know a few that are better than the others. I mean, that's some pretty good general stock, and definitely can uh, can use those. Eh, that might take a while to sell. They're going to you know sit, and we'll see what happens with them. But then there's there's a few titles, um, the legendary Alice Munro, uh, Canadian writer. Um, Ms. Monroe passed away just a few years ago. Very successful writer. And uh, as you can see, we have we have her signature on the um, the front free end paper, which is this one, or the FFEP as we call it in the biz. So that's that's a very nice uh, very nice copy. Second printing though, I wish it was the first edition. Um, and uh, well, we'll talk about that in a second. We'll see, how can you tell if it's a first edition or a second edition? Um, this book I found in here, it's called uh, Two Tales by Walter D. Lemaire. Uh, never heard of this one before. Uh, completely unaware. Um, you see this uh, three-quarter on the spine? That's vellum. You don't really see that much anymore in bindings. So we really like this one because... As you can see, so it's a limited edition to 250, numbered and signed by the author, of which 234 are for sale. And this is number 197. And then we have a very nice, neat little signature of the author right there. So that's uh, definitely, you know, going to increase the value of this book. Um, does anybody still know who he is or care? I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I guess we'll find out on that one. Um, this is a very nice find in amongst all of those. Uh, the Canadian uh, pianist, uh, jazz musician, Oscar Peterson, one of a kind, one of the best ever. And a very nice, bold yep, signature, again, on the FFEP. Uh, and it, it is inscribed to somebody so that, you yeah, know, Oftentimes, people go, well, if it's signed to somebody else, I don't really want that one. If it's just his signature, many uh, many authors will sign on the title page under here somewhere, and they'll just sign their name. And that's usually preferable from a bookseller's point of view. Um, this is a very interesting book, uh, The Revolt by Menachem Begin, former prime minister of Israel. And one of the uh, fellows, people, uh, that actually helped founded the state of Israel, uh, right in towards the end of World War II. And uh, fascinating signature in friendship, M. Began. Such a, such a tiny, neat little signature from, you know, really a, a titan of, uh, of history. Okay, we're gonna look to see how can you tell, usually, uh, a first edition from a not a first edition. So how do we tell a first edition? Well, uh, it takes uh, a bit of research, some uh, practice and experience, and sometimes a little bit of luck. Um, I have reference books that I have collected over the years that I can access when I'm looking up, um, you know, a particular title or publisher um, and help me determine if, is that a first edition or is it not? Uh, sometimes it can be very challenging and you want to make sure if you're Selling the book as a first edition at Darnwell better be a first edition. So here's a book by one of my favorite authors and illustrators. This was a gift from my lovely wife. Uh, it's called Look See with Uncle Bill by uh, a bit of a Canadian theme here today by Will James, who was actually from Quebec, ended up being a cowboy down in the U.S. in the 20s and 30s. Anyway, uh, published by Scribner's. Now, Scribner's is an interesting one because they have a very particular way of identifying their first editions. And if we look here, you can see the A. It is, if it is, the A is missing and it's a Scribner's publication, it is not a first edition about 99% of the time. Seems there's always exceptions, but if the A is there, you're pretty safe. Um, and if you have if you have some real doubts about it, you can have uh, books like this. 
uh, essentially it's a bibliography and it's a book about all the Will James books and how to identify them. So we know that we have a copy of Look See. So right here, published 1938, over here. Uh, so it gives you a picture of the dust jacket here and uh, and the boards. What is the illustration underneath the dust jacket? And then it tells us we can also go to page 112 and get more information there. So we do that. Go to page 112. It's usually after page 111. Um, oh, so it is. There it is. Um, and there we go. There is Look See, Uncle Bill, published 1938, and it tells you some of the uh, things that are going to help you identify it as a true first edition. Um, obviously published in 1938 at the bottom of the title page. It was not reprinted in 1938, so if you ever come across a copy, uh, it says uh, other, something other than 1938, it's not a first edition. It gives you uh, the size uh, of the book, the price. Uh, let's see, this one is not price clipped. So we go back to our copy of Hook C with Uncle Bill. And up in the corner here is a $2. So, yeah, these points are, are adding up. That tells us it is a first edition. Price clip meant that that corner would be cut off by a bookseller and they would add a, a higher price as a rule. So there's all sorts of these kind of books that you can uh, access. Um, for a writer like um, our friend Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, here's a rather thick book and this will tell you all you need to know about every printing of every Sherlock Holmes book just about uh, <laughs> there's been so many but only those written by Doyle so uh, it, it deals with Sherlock Holmes it deals with Professor Challenger it deals with the White Company it deals with uh, his, his books he wrote about spirituality everything that he wrote uh, essentially is in here and it will tell us how to identify a particular printing of a book you might have, uh, which came in very handy for me when I did acquire. This is a first edition, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Oh, beautiful book. I love this book, except that uh, there's some issues with this copy. Uh, as you can see, some uh, child or somebody uh, inked all of this out with a pen and they. The uh, title page is missing, the uh, dedication page is missing, half title page is missing. It's, yeah, it's a bit of, a, of an issue. But nonetheless, I have it someday. I'm going to do something with it. But one of the ways that you can tell that this is a first edition is on the diagram here, there's a little street sign. It's kind of hard to see. See that little street sign? It should be blank on the first edition. Later printings. They printed the word strand in there, I want to say. And one of the kind of cool points that helps you identify it is on the uh, the last page, last paragraph right here. It says, as to Miss Violent Hunter, Violent? Oh, no, no, that should be Violet. So later editions, they corrected that from Violent to Violet. Tells you this is a true first edition. Here's a few uh, of the other books that I use to help identify uh, first editions and printings and what exactly have I got in, in my hands. Um, for instance, the Hudson's Bay to uh, Harrow Strait deals strictly with books uh, about the Arctic and it's a Canadian uh, printing. First editions, a guide to identification. This is an older book. Uh, and is very helpful because uh, it talks about publishers that are no longer with us. Uh, Collected Books was outstanding. Uh, Patricia and Alan Ahern published this for many years. Um, Patricia passed away a few years ago and there hasn't been another one produced as far as I know. Uh, the Dictionary of the Book. This was published last year. 
it is outstanding and it's like well a dictionary <laughs> um first edition's a guide to identification the classic abc for book collectors if you have any interest at all in the collecting or a book nerd or you want to know more about books start here um this one is interesting catalogs of books of the 15th and 16th centuries uh, published 1927-28 catalogs back in the day were an excellent way to identify books um, here well, let's take a quick look so that in a catalog they would include illustrations so that's a book uh, published 1509 um, and you can see on an entry here well that's all in German Let's see if there's a, that's all in German. Um, so each one of these listings gives you details about that particular book. Here's another illustration that you would find uh, in the, the book itself. Uh, so here's some more entries. So books like this are, are uh, can be very or helpful they're also very heavy um, I also have over here shelves of books that deal with you know Ian Fleming uh, with Canadian literature uh, uh, autographs I can go in and look compare uh, books uh, about kids books about illustrators uh, how to collect books uh, a bibliography of the prairie provinces uh, Bruce Peel who has a library named after him now at the uh, University of Alberta one of my very favoriteest writers of all about books Nicholas A. Basbins um, a Gentle Madness is just such a good book. If you're a book nerd, again, you need to read that. Okay, so uh, lots of stuff out there to help you determine is it or is it not a first edition. Can be when difficult. I'm pricing a book, uh, we need to deal with two things. One is the dust jacket, which can carry up to 80% of the value of a collectible book. But we want to describe the condition of this jacket. And as you can see... There's some chipping and loss, the head of the spine. Uh, it's bumped and rubbed to the extremities. Price clipped, oops, price clipped here. Uh, we've got another chip there. Um, I'm not sure if you can tell here, but you can see the spine has been sunned. That means it's been exposed to sunlight, changes the color of it. Uh, some books that's almost impossible to avoid. You can see clean and white the inside wrapper is the rest of this has been exposed to the sun so we need to describe this accurately um, so that when somebody's looking for it online they understand that this is you know only a good maybe good plus uh, example of the dust jacket for this particular book now we will describe the book separately um, nice bright colors and titles on the spine. I'm not sure if you can kind of see this, but maybe that way. The spine should be like that, but it tilts. That spine uh, is cocked, which means it's a little off center. So you definitely want to include that in your description. Uh, you're going to talk about the corners. Are they sharp? Are they square? Are they bumped? These ones are bumped down at the bottom, so we would certainly include that. Uh, the boards are nice and clean. Um, no damage to them. Uh, then you would talk about the interior of the book. Uh, so the previous owner's uh, name, uh, address, and phone number for some reason. Um, but you would definitely include that in your description. And you talk about... The interior of the book are there any tears are there any underlining is there any stains anything like that we would mention 
there is you know occasional I'm not sure I'd have to look closely I'm not sure if that's a stain or if it's foxing I'm leaning towards a stain uh, so you go through and you just uh, identify all those details now one of the things that makes this particular copy um uh, unusual is right here on the publication page so it tells us it's uh, first published in great britain 1962 uh almost all of the copies that came out of the uk uh had the name ken kesey inked out that's right, somebody sat in a warehouse with a pen or a Sharpie and crossed his name out because uh, Kesey and his folks were having a big dispute with the publishers at Methuen in London and um, <laughs> they crossed his name out off the book. This one is not crossed out, so uh, makes it a little scarcer, a little more valuable. I'm not going to look through all six of the boxes, but this is just kind of a, a sampling of some of the stuff that we we acquired and, and why it turned out to be so ideal for me. Legislative Library of Saskatchewan. Uh, those are always um, seem to, to be able to sell. Farley Mowat. Um, I'll have to look at those. That might go into my own collection as I do collect Farley. I have since I was a lad. Uh, and you can see these are all kind of concerned about Canadians. Uh, I have a copy of this book, and that's fine, because I know people are interested in, in acquiring that book, so I don't mind that I have another one. Um, the Newmans, uh, they, used to, uh, they used to move a little bit, but uh, the last few years, um, although uh, Peter C. Newman was a highly recognized Canadian historian and writer, uh, his fallen a little bit out of favor i mean you can you can see by this book that he started writing way back when he was writing about canadian prime minister john diefenbaker of which i have some signed copies by the way um who's seen the wind w o mitchell always uh always a good find i i gain this is a double i have one uh mary soames was the daughter of winston churchill um this box uh, Safari by uh, the renowned Canadian artist Robert Bateman, who, as it turns out, was the very first person I ever interviewed on television when I started my television career, you know, about 1862. Very nice man. Um, Rudy Weeb, Maureen McTeer, the wife of uh, former Prime Minister uh, Joe Clark. Um, some more uh, Rudy Weeb uh, signed book by Anne Murray, the Canadian songstress. Uh, Rita McNeil, again, another Canadian singer. Uh, Mel Hertig, the famous Canadian publisher. So all of these you can see. There's a Fountain of Age by Betty Friedan. Of course, it was not Canadian. One of the founders of um, the women's movement um, back in the 60s, I want to say. Uh, very important figure in uh, fighting for the rights of women. Battle still going on today, as it turns out. Um, Margaret Atwood, of course, we are all very familiar with Margaret Atwood. And uh, I have uh, actually quite a few signed books by Ms. Atwood in the store. Um, there's two, two of the books signed by former Prime Minister Joe Clark, Maria Campbell, Rowdy Men. Now, some of these books go back, you know, to the 70s and so forth. Um, and even farther. Oh, the English patient. Yes, remember uh, remember that from uh, Seinfeld. Yeah, mm -hmm. her favorite movie. Um, the Englishman's Boy, Vanderhag. Very uh, very good uh, Saskatchewan-based writer. So that's just a sample um, of the six boxes of, uh, and uh, pretty much all of those are signed. Um, except I should show you this one. Uh, I had it here a minute ago, this one. Now, people say, oh, my book is signed. Is it? Sometimes you have to double check. You can see that signature. Um, this is the book about Jack McClelland of McClelland and Stewart, 
famous, famous Canadian publishing house. That is a printed signature. Every one of these copies that you pick up has that in it. And you see that infrequently in, in books, uh, that they have a, you know, facsimile signature. Uh, so you have to be careful. Sometimes you have to get out the uh, magnifying glass and have a look and see if the ink is, uh, you know, live. Okay. That's one of the things I really like about books, book collecting and uh, working with books is all these little things that, uh, it's like a detective uh, adventure half the time. You have to really kind of put your mind to it, do a little research, pay attention and, uh, see what you come up with, uh, Sometimes uh, you have to take a you have to take a chance. You're uh, you know you're in the thrift store, the garage sale, and you look at this book and you go, ah, oh, gee, I don't know. Um, hopefully you can rely on your gut and uh, your experience. And you know what? If it's a buck, why not just get the book? Anyways, that's it for this episode of Bailey the Bookman. Hope you enjoyed that little uh, touch on some of the uh, finer aspects of book collecting. Uh, by all means, uh, do further research, look into it because there's a lot out there. Uh, way more than what we touched on today. I uh, hope you enjoy that. We'll see you next time.